We've taken a small leap forward in our project and added a new section to our designs. Let's take a quick look. So on top, we have our hero section that we've been working on and below we now have a new section with popular destinations. So we got a list of great workation destinations and each city is presented in a UI card. These cards are displayed in a nice grid and you can see that if I resize the window, it goes from three columns to two columns and eventually one column. For this popular destination section, we'll want to work with some data. Instead of hard coding everything in the HTML, we'd like to have an array of objects coming and then iterate over this array to output one card for each destination. Okay, first I'll quickly run you through the changes I've made to the code. Our index.html file is still here and is still our entry point, but instead of having a whole markup here, we now have a div with the ID of root instead. We also have a script tag, which points to src main.jsx. And if we look in src main.jsx, you can see that we're importing React here, and then we render an app component, and we do so in our HTML in the element that has an ID of root, which is this div here that we've just looked at. The app component in question comes from here. This is just a single component that returns the whole markup that we had in the previous lesson, as well as our new popular destination section. The markup for the hero section is the exact same that we had before, with the only difference that I've replaced the class attributes with class name, since in JavaScript, class is a reserved keyword. One more thing to show you, I've added a popular destinations file here, which is an array of objects that has the data for all of our six destinations. I'll go and collapse our hero section here so we can focus on the new section. And I'll also scroll down here to the new section. So we have a heading and our paragraph text here. Then we have a responsive grid container. And below that, we have the markup for our first destination card. Now there's currently a lot of duplication because we have the same block of HTML for each of the six cards. So for example, this flex item center rounded LG BGY shadow LG overflow hidden is repeated six times in our page. If I collapse the first card, collapse the second card, the third card, etc., you can see that it's present every single time. The same is gonna be true for the image classes and for this wrapper, the heading tag for the city name, the paragraph tag for the heading price, and so on. So let me quickly add a space before the start of this card. And something you'd be tempted to do here is create a card CSS component class. So this would be the card container. We'd have a card image, card uh, content wrapper. <laughs> this would be the card title and so on. By abstracting that away, we'd be removing the duplication in the strings of utility classes applied, but we'd still be left with a ton of duplication at the HTML level. Even if we'd create a nice CSS component, this component would require that we always have the exact same markup structure. For example, we'd have an image tag directly inside the container, and then we would need to always have this wrapping div that contains the h3 and the paragraph tag, and so on. So we'd still be left with this repeating block of HTML over and over for each card. In a situation like here, if you do have the possibility, a much better idea is to do the abstraction at the markup level. You want to be able to reuse this block of rigid markup multiple times, but only have to write it once. That's something you can achieve by creating a template partial if you're using just about any templating language, or create a self-contained reusable UI component that can accept some data. Since we're using React here, that's what we're gonna do. So I'll quickly undo my CSS classes that I had created here. And I'm going to duplicate this first card here and we'll try to use this markup to loop over our destination's data. So the first thing I'll do is go at the top and I'll import my data here. Import popular destinations from data slash popular destinations. Now I'll scroll down to the first card and create a bit of space here. And now here we want to get this array of destinations and iterate over it. Now bear with me, this is a little specific to React and JSX, but I'll open a set of curly braces to be able to write a JavaScript expression. In here, I'll take my list of popular destinations, and because it's an array, I'll use the array.map method, which is going to iterate over each destination. And then inside of here, I'll be able to return a little bit of markup for each destination. So as a quick example, I'll do a p tag, and inside I'll reach for destination.city. Let's save that. And yep, you can see in the preview, we have printed the name of the city for each destination. Great, so instead of that city, I'll go grab the whole card markup and move it up here. 
And nice, you can see that now we're generating one card for each destination. Of course, each card is saying the same thing because currently we have hard-coded values. When iterating over data like this in React, you need to pass a unique identifier key to the parent element. So here, since each city has a different name, I'll use destination.city. So if we look below our six Toronto cards, you can see that we still have one card for each CD, which is coming from the HTML below here. So we can select the markup for all these six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and delete all of that. And now we're left with only one block of HTML and the six cards here. Perfect. We've seen that within that markup, we can have access to our destination data. Now, if I hover over this, you can see the shape of the destination object. We have a city, average price, property count, image URL, and image alt properties. So let's go and use these, starting by the image here. And instead of a hard-coded image to Toronto, we'll have destination.imageurl. Let's save, and immediately you can see all the cards coming alive with the right image. Let's change the alt tag here to destination.image. Out. Next, we'll do the city, destination.city, then the average price here, destination.average price. And finally, we'll update our property count with destination.property count. So this is looking great. We now have our destination cards here, one for each destination. And we're only ever using one single block of HTML to output all of these cards. Now there's only ever one place in this page where we have this specific string of classes. Same for our image, our heading, and so on. We've completely removed the need to abstract away this duplication of utility class strings, but we've also removed the duplication for the markup structure. If this was the only place we'd use our card component in our project, we'd be good to go like this. Let's imagine, however, that we'd like to be able to use a destination card somewhere else on another page. To do so, we can grab the markup that we've returned in this .map method. So I'll grab all of this here, and I'll create a new file in components, which I'll call destinationCard.jsx. So I'll quickly import React from React, and simply export a function called destinationCard. Inside here, I'll return the markup for our card. I'll quickly remove the key here since we don't need that. And notice that now we're using this destination everywhere in the component. So to be able to actually access it, we need to receive it as a prop or property. So here I'll accept the destination. And now since we're exporting this function, we'll be able to use a destination card component anywhere we import it and decide what destination we want to display in it. So let's go back in our app component, and up here I'll import this new destination card component. Import destination card from components slash destination card. Now I can go down here, and instead of this whole chunk of HTML, I can simply return a destination card. Now remember we need to pass the destination as a prop, so destination equals destination. And finally, one more time, because we are in our dot map here, I'll pass a key of destination.cd. Let's save, and it still works. Just to prove that it works, let me output the destination card outside of this loop. And this time I'll reach for the array of popular destinations and go for the index one, which is the second item in the array, so it should be Malibu. So when I press save, we should see a Malibu destination card above the Toronto one. And there you go. Okay, I'll remove that quickly. And so now in any page where you would want to use destination card, you could import that component and then use it by passing a destination that you want to display. The great thing with this is we now have one source of truth for this destination card component. We only ever deal with one single block of markup. And if we want to bring changes to this destination card component, we only have to make changes in one single place. For example, let's say we want to make the CD name uppercase. I can come in here and add the uppercase class and save, and every single card anywhere it's used on the project is updated. There's no need to worry about duplication of string of utility classes like this one, because we've completely removed the need for this duplication.